we are meeting on the standards of Durham um, Aboriginal and Nation. And we pay respects to their elders past, present and future. Um, this is a remarkable turnout, um, but it's not surprising because it's such a serious issue and it um, affects so many communities and individuals <coughs> and schools and um, groups right across um, such, a, such a big area. Uh, welcome to people who've come from Wurunga, um, from Cheltenham, Beecroft, uh, West Pennant Hills, obviously. Um, thank you for coming, um, local people. We appreciate your presence and your, um, your questions and your expertise. And of course, the community groups that are working so hard to get information out there to people about what's happening and to ask questions of the government so we can find out as much as we can about um, North Connex. Got two fabulous speakers here tonight who will um, answer a lot of our questions and um, be able to um, to take some of some of yours. Dr. Maureen Faruqi is the Greens MP leading the fight in Parliament for the best outcome for our communities um, facing North Kennex. Uh, Maureen is a civil engineer. She's also an academic and she's been heavily involved with local government at a very practical level looking for um, sustainable solutions to environmental problems. Uh, Maureen's a fellow of the Institute of Engineers of Australia and she's been recently voted one of the most influential women in New South Wales. Um, so we're grateful for her presence tonight. Um, Maureen is joined by Dr Elizabeth Johnson, who is the founder of CAPS Communities Against Polluting Stacks. And Elizabeth's very involved in um, the community fight against the other staff in Moronga. And she has some um, really significant expertise to share there. Uh, Elizabeth's passionate about local community um, health and she has three children who will be living within 50 metres of the Moronga stack. So she's got a very personal interest in uh, making sure we, we get um, a good outcome for all, all residents and all uh, we are going to hear from Marine and from Elizabeth first and then um, have a question and answer session at the end of um, those presentations. So um, can I invite Marie to make uh, this as well? Thank you and uh, good evening everyone and welcome. I'll start off by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land. We need to pay my respects to their both past and present. This land always has been and always will be Aboriginal land. It is really wonderful to be here in West Bend Hills tonight and actually talk to you about the information that I have about North Connex, the, the concerns that the Greens have, and also to hear your concerns about the North Connex as well, because I do believe that the local people who know their area better than <coughs> anyone else. And I think that's what's been missing with the government decision making. One of the key things that has been missing is this lack of consultation and engagement with the local communities who will be affected most by this project. But we're here tonight to talk about this impending motorway project, which the government are currently calling North Connect. In its previous iterations, it has been known as the M1, M2 link, and also the F3, M2 link. But I think by changing names, it doesn't take the stink out of this particular project, nor can it hide the fact that North Connect is a $3 billion unsolicited proposal for a tollway tunnel from a private company, and it will, no doubt, increase pollution in this area while failing to solve the congestion problem as well that we have here. Thanks to the local Greens group, Dry Deping Greens, for actually organizing tonight's forum, and particularly to Janet and Barbara and Emma um, as well, um, you know, who've been working really hard, not just in organizing this forum, but also raising their voices against the North Connect and other um, I guess transport project which just don't cut it in the 21st century. And also a huge thanks to Dr. Elizabeth Johnson. And we've been working together on this and it's really great that Elizabeth is here because her expertise um, in health as well as, as a, you know, a local community member is really invaluable for our work. This project is unfolding in the context of a liberal national government which is really obsessed with the idea of building more and more motorways and toll roads despite the fact that many of them have miserably failed in the past. They failed on transport basis and they failed on economic feasibility basis. And the two examples that I give you are across the Cross City Tunnel and the Lane Cove Tunnel. 
both went into receivership. Both are not really used um, as much as was predicted, so we've had flawed traffic analysis, and now here we are building another one. But not just one other one, you probably all have heard about the West Connects as well, which is a $13 billion project. And I think one of the major issues is that these projects, like I said, they will not solve congestion, they will cause more pollution, and if they are built, then billions of dollars that goes into them is billions of dollars that's not going to be used for good integrated transport solutions, of which there are many. And, you know, we have an indication from the Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, in the sense of how much money they're putting into toll roads. When uh, Tony Abbott came in a couple of years ago, the first, one of the first decisions that was made was to take all the money away from public transport and putting it into toll roads. Um, just recently, Infrastructure Australia's own consultants, um, in one of their leaked, leaked report has done an analysis of this and said that our governments have a gambler's addiction on roads. So that's one of the key issues um, that we have at the moment with this government. And I know that there are many critics of North Connects, and we all look at it from different perspectives. For some people, it's actually about stopping this project. For others, it's you know, about changing the rule. And for others, it is about filtering the stacks or having the stacks removed. And they're all valid concerns. Also, I was having a good chat to John earlier. And John is really concerned about the democratic angle, and I think he's absolutely right. I think this project is a failure of democracy um, because the governments have completely overridden community concerns on this and haven't really spoken to the communities about how alternatives should be discussed. So tonight I just want to take you um, maybe for about five or ten minutes um, through the position that the Greens and I have come to on this toll tunnel. Um, and the reasons for that particular position. Um, I did make a submission on the EIS. We went through very diligently, as I know did Elizabeth, through the EIS and um, picked out issues of you know, huge concern that we thought would be valid to raise with the government. And I'll take you through a few of those. Firstly, the justification of North Connects does not stack up on many bases. The first is government's claim that travel times and congestion will improve with North Connect. But in their own environmental impact statement, it shows that travel time on Penn and Hill roads will actually increase after the tunnel is been completed in 2019. Um, the figure that's uh, kind of been touted in the EIS is that on average, at the moment, it's 18 minutes, and it'll be 20 minutes in the North Connect is built. So things will not actually get better. Um, and that's in the EIS. So you don't know how much is hidden uh, that we don't know of. Um, the other issue is also, of course, the drivers who don't want to pay a toll will not go into the tunnel. They will still remain on Penn and Hill roads. And I, I don't think that's going to alleviate the traffic congestion. We know that historical preference for road infrastructure projects in Sydney has not reduced the rising cost of congestion at all. North Connects is not going to be any different from that. Um, and alternatives really, one of the key things that I find really problematic with projects like this is that no alternatives have ever been looked at and it's the same case for this EIS as well. The one big claim that the government makes is that the North Connects will get freight trucks off Tennant Hills Road and into the tunnel underneath. But we don't know how this will happen. While the government is saying that they want to use these point-to-point -point cameras to analyze the you know, pace and speed at which the trucks use Penn Hill Road and force those trucks um, to you know, go into the tunnel, they still haven't really looked at how many of those trucks will be making deliveries. So the trucks who make deliveries can't go into the tunnel because there's no way out of the tunnel to make those deliveries. And really, in the EIS, there is no consideration of you know, what sort of system will be implemented. Um, and there are big question marks on the practicality of that system. Um, there, again, with, um, after North Connects is built, there's still concerns about forcing traffic onto local roads because people might want to try and find ways not to go on Penn Hill roads and not to go in the tollway tunnel, but to go on local roads. And that, again, increases um, congestion and in, in neighbor, quiet neighborhoods. It's going to be a huge issue. The other big concern, and I'll leave it to Elizabeth to talk about it in more detail, but it is, of course, the increasing air pollution that comes with more cars and tunnels. And with pollution is also the concern of climate change. 
and I think North Connects will make both these actively worse. Polluting emissions from trucks, if they had looked at an alternative, could have been reduced inexpensively at source um, through the diesel retrofit program. And you know, there are, you can do some calculations and it's a much cheaper way of reducing it. Um, I think it would cost hundreds of thousands rather than billions of dollars, which North connects with. And the potentially devastating impact of tunnels on local communities is perhaps more strongly felt through the proposed location of the unfiltered polluting exhaust tanks. And it's quite telling that a government which, when they were in opposition, were quite vocal about filtering other tunnels. And I'll just read you out a quote from our current transport minister, Gladys Berejiklian, when she was in opposition, and she was talking about the Lake Grove Tunnel in April 2008. And this is what she said. I regret that our legitimate and serious concerns not only about air quality and filtration issues, but most importantly, about the enormous potential health effects that this government's failure inflicts on our communities are not being addressed. And yet, they repeat those same mistakes again. I think that's pretty shameful. Um, I do also just want to quickly note that while North Connects may help in reducing pollution along Penn and Hill, Hill, Hills Road, if the government's analysis that everyone will go in the tunnel you know, may be somewhat valid. We know that the total amount of emission from vehicles will be increased and it will be concentrated in the stacks when um, air comes out of those. So really, it's uh, quite misleading to say that it will actually reduce pollution because it, was not, it will not and it will be more hazardous for the community. Um, and you know, like I said, I leave the rest up to um, Elizabeth to talk about air pollution. But it is important to note also that the project does not recognize or work to reduce the high levels of transport-related greenhouse gas emissions. After energy generation in New South Wales, it is actually transport that causes the highest greenhouse emissions in New South Wales. And while the debate rages in the federal government at the moment over whether to keep a renewable energy target, it is now even more important that we minimize greenhouse gas emissions in any other way that we can, um, including using clean transport solutions. I do want to talk about some of the alternatives um, to the North Connects, which have not at all been considered. And I guess one of the reasons they haven't been considered, because this is an unsolicited project for the benefit of a private company, Transurban. And so that's a deal that's been done. And so why consider alternatives? I think government's paying one billion between federal and state, and um, Transurban will be paying two billion and then making many billions through this. Um, and the other point, I think, is really that this toll road or toll tunnel actually goes against the government's own strategy um, of freight off roads. So the government has quite a good strategy of moving freight off roads onto rail. Uh, but today, only about 14% of the total freight moved in Sydney. Uh, move from uh, from Sydney to Newcastle is moved by rail. So I think the target was 25% by 2020, and um, the um, Minister Duncan Gay admits himself that they cannot, absolutely cannot meet that target. So the funding and approval of North Connects actually conflicts with government's own commitments. And I do know that there is a lot of concern, and I know the community, and I've spoken to them a lot in Beecroft, Cheltenham, that area, about the Epic to Conley third track. And they have very valid concerns. Putting freight on rail doesn't mean that you disregard the damage to the environment or the noise that the community faces or other concerns that the community has. You can have freight on rail, and you can still address all those concerns. I mean, like I said, in 21st century, we have good engineering solutions for that. And if we spend a bit of time in looking at alternatives, even if they are a little bit more expensive, um, you know, that overcomes the expense and the angst that the community has when they have to bear noise and environmental damage. So we can look at freight on rail, but doing it in a way that is acceptable to the community and minimizes the burden on the community. One of the other things with freight is, and I've been pushing for it um, a bit as well, is to actually have some freight go directly to the Newcastle port. And then that would alleviate the problem of bringing everything into Sydney and then driving it up, um, up north. So that's another thing we've been talking to the Newcastle community about. And I know that that idea has been around for a while. 
Also in terms of public transport, if we're looking at um, you know, having less cars on road, I think we really need to upgrade public transport options, especially Sydney to Newcastle passenger rail services. We know that a small mode shift to public transport can have really huge impacts on traffic congestion. And New South Wales has a goal to increase the patronage, frequency, and reliability of public transport according to their own 2021 goals, yet <coughs> public funds are completely being directed towards toll roads for Newcastle. We also know that 60% of the total daily traffic on the F3 is made of traffic to and from the central coast. So if we can actually improve the line, um, and again, this has been done in Queensland, you actually improve the track a little bit and you put till trains on it. There, that's been done in Queensland just a few years ago, and till trains can go much faster on bends, so you could actually reduce the time from Sydney to Newcastle by a good 40 to 50 minutes, which would mean that it would become feasible for people to travel faster by train than by car. And so you could actually conceivably move more people onto trains, and that would alleviate the um, traffic congestion problem as well. And there are lots of other solutions like you know, integrating timetables and fares and you know, having um, good uh, connecting services as well. And another one is connecting the central coast to Parramatta uh, by building the Parramatta to Epping Rail Link. So these are all solutions that, you know, that are there, that are practical, but the government hasn't really paid heed to any of these alternatives. So I guess for me and the Greens, North Connect fails on all grounds. It will not alleviate congestion. It threatens human health through pollution, and it threatens our environment. And we know that there are better alternatives. So that's kind of our plan in terms of pushing the government towards those better alternatives. And I know, you know, people have spoken to me and said, well, isn't it too late? Well, I believe it's never too late. I believe that the power of the community really can change decisions that politicians make. But of course, that I think it's really important as well that you all, and I know, um, you know, CAPS really is fighting hard to get the stacks filtered. And that's really great. I think there are all different ways which we can look at this project, try and make it better, or try and for it not to actually happen at all. And we need to push for that. And now is a really great opportunity in terms of the election coming up in six months. I think politicians are actually listening at this time more than at any other time. Um, and I think you should be asking your candidates state their position quite clearly on North Connects or any other issues that you are concerned about. It's really, really important to get them to commit to a position and then really question them and make them accountable about it. I know there is also a lot of cynicism in the community and you know, I, um, I think that it's right to be cynical, especially see, we've seen what's happened in the last few months alone in ICAP, there's 12 Liberal Party members who've either resigned or are on the back benches because of the close connections with business and because of corruption allegations. So I think cynicism aside, it's still, we still live, live in a liberal democracy where the power of making change should be with all of you, with the community. Uh, and it'd be great to talk to you later on as well once Elizabeth um, you know, kind of spoken to you as well as to what you think can be done and you know, as a, as a Greens MP in Parliament and our candidate, Emma, we're all hoping to work closely with the community to have good outcomes for you as well as the environment. Thank you.